Hello everybody, in this video I'm going to talk about GPT Engineer. This is an open source project which helps you generate an entire code base just based on a single prompt. To me that sounds a bit too good to be true and based on my experience with AutoGPT, there is still a decent amount of cleanup that needs to be done on any applications built using such autonomous agents. So make sure to adjust your expectations before you start. But based on my experience, GPT Engineer is significantly better than something like God Mode Space or Agent GPT, which use AutoGPT in the background. Now, if this is your first time to my channel, I want to welcome you and recommend you to join my AI newsletter. I also recommend you to go to my playlist called Sparks of AGI and check my first video where I teach you how to set OpenAI usage limits because you're going to need to set up a paid account with OpenAI. Now mind you, this is different from having a ChatGPT Plus account which charges $20 a month. And this is going to be much, much cheaper, usually a few cents to try out a GPT engineer locally. You're going to also need to have some kind of software which lets you view the code that is generated. I'm using Visual Studio Code. You also need to have Python set up locally and pip to install all the dependencies that are needed to run GPT Engineer. There's a few things I want to mention before I get started. The first thing is I'm actually testing this live. As my channel says, this is testing AI. So I might not complete and generate an entire application. As I mentioned before, a lot of times the first few generations of anything of this sort is going to be messy. So what I'm hoping to achieve here is at least to build a skeleton of a code base that is functional. And it might not run on the first go, but I want to see it actually complete the generation of the code base. And also GPT engineer is specifically used to build code bases. So if you don't have any programming experience, you might not follow the entire process of what I'm going to show you. Keep in mind that this is not for generating text or generating images. This is to generate code bases, not pieces of code, entire code bases. So this is not going to generate a small function. It's going to generate all the files needed to have my application ready to go. Because usually to generate entire code bases, you need to know the architecture of a software. For example, if you try something with React.js, you need to know how React functions, how the whole structure of a React application works. The next thing I want to mention here is that if you do get stuck, they actually have a Discord and they have this channel called Setup and First Time Use. So if you get stuck, there have people already asked some questions on this channel. So maybe your problem has already been solved. So go to this Discord and join it. Also, if you do find issues with GPT Engineer, you can post it in this bug crushing channel. You can also use this section called AI Code Advice to get ideas for prompts to use with GPT Engineer. All right, now I'm going to get started with installing GPT Engineer and running a prompt. The first thing I did here is to set up an empty folder called Testing GPT, and I'm going to go into that folder from my desktop. Okay, inside that, now I'm going to first clone the repo here. I'm going to copy this. And if you don't have GitHub installed locally, first make sure to set up GitHub on your computer. Okay, now I have my GPT engineer code base ready to go. Now I'm going to install all the dependencies that I need using this command. Okay, it seems to be working. It's downloading all the files that are needed to run GPT engineer. Okay, it says successfully built GPT engineer. Perfect. It says a new release of pip is available. Let me just go ahead and do that fast. This is unrelated to GPT engineer. I just want to complete that. All right, the next step here is to export your OpenAI API key. Here it says to run using GPT-4, but unfortunately I don't have access to GPT-4 yet. So what I'm gonna do is to generate a new key for whatever I have, that is GPT-3.5. I'm gonna click a uh, new secret key. If you don't know what I'm doing here, go back to my playlist and go to my first video where I show you how to create an API key. I'm gonna say GPT, click secret key. Press, copy this. Go back to my generation here. Paste it right there. 
Okay, now my OpenAI API key is exported. Now every time I run GPT Engineer, it's gonna use some of my money, that is gonna be a few cents really, to use the OpenAI API key from my paid account. All right, let me look at the code structure of GPT Engineer right here. We have projects, we have the main prompt. This demo right here is using this prompt where it built a snake in Python. I'm not gonna run this one. I'm gonna test GPT Engineer with an idea of my own. For that, I run this command where I copy that example project into my new project. So I'm gonna run this one, click project. So now I have that example project and my new project, which I just created. I'm gonna name this something else. So the example I'm gonna try out today is to have GPT Engineer create me a single page website which accepts some payments. So I'm gonna say payment website. And inside I have this main prompt. I'm gonna delete that right here. It says fill in the main prompt file in your new folder. So this is where I provide the prompt of what I want. And just like it says in the GitHub repo, this is literally a one line prompt. I'm not gonna provide too much details here because as it runs and executes this prompt, it's gonna ask me clarifying questions. And that's what makes this so good because it doesn't make any assumptions. It asks me what it needs to know pretty early on. So I'm gonna say, a single page website which accepts payments using a credit card and maybe also Bitcoin. So what I need is to have GPT engineer create me a single page website which accepts payments using a credit card and also Bitcoin. And just to make this better, I'm gonna say highly secure. So I want a highly secure single page website which accepts payments using a credit card and Bitcoin. So that's all the information I need to provide right now. And now it says run GPT engineer project slash my new project. So I'm gonna copy this. Let me clear this a little bit. Copy this. I'm gonna change the name here because I changed the name here to payment website and press enter. Okay, it seems to be working. I have this message right here where it says the model GPT-4 does not exist because like I said before, I don't have access to it. And it mentions here that the model type is invalid. What it did is it reverted back to GPT 3.5 Turbo, which is what I do have access to. And it also provides me a link where I can sign up for the waitlist for GPT 4, which I have already done. But the main thing I wanna show you here is based on that prompt which I provided, there is some clarification that is needed from the side of GPT Engineer. It says, what level of security is required for the website? Is the website design already created or does it need to be designed? What payment gateway will be used for credit card payments? What type of Bitcoin payment system will be used? Is there a preference for a specific programming language or the platform to build the website? So these are actually really, really good questions. And I'm so happy that it's asking me all these questions right away before building all that. And for instance, if you haven't thought about these questions yourself and you just have an idea, for instance, maybe you just have an idea of some kind of a DeFi or crypto project which accepts payments using Bitcoin but also allows you to use credit card to accept payments, you don't know what you need. For example, maybe you haven't even thought about security and you don't know what kind of website design you need because you don't have a background in web design, nor do you have a background in payment gateway. So what you can do is you can either do a separate kind of research using ChatGPT or maybe someone who is a professional in all of these areas and get all these answers in a piece of paper or a document first before you even start on this. And this is why I'm so impressed with GPT Engineer because this kind of question is asked by someone who is a senior developer or a product manager 
or a test engineer who needs to know all these things to make sure that the application built is high quality. But what I'm going to do is actually let GPT engineer make all the decisions and see how that works. So I'm going to click C, which is C to move on. Okay, it says based on the requirements, the following classes, functions, and methods will be necessary. A user, which represents the user of the website. A payment, which represents the payment made by the user. Credit card payment, a credit card payment made for the user. Bitcoin payment. So these are entities who will be involved as a part of this application. And that's why these are all classes. Then functions are all kinds of actions that will happen. For example, validation of a credit card processing the actual credit card payment, processing the actual Bitcoin payment. Then there are methods, user make credit card payment, user dot make Bitcoin payment. So for that user, these are the two kinds of methods that they can do. So the user can make a credit card payment or a Bitcoin payment. And what it's gonna do here is the website will default to using the Flask framework in Python. And if you didn't even know that Flask existed, uh, GPT engineer can make that decision for you. And it set up all the requirements that are needed to set up Flask locally. It generated the first file, which is in Python, which generates the entire code right here. And I'm kind of going slow because I want to show what's happening in the background and it has generated all of this code and this is the index.html of this page and this is just mind-blowing to me see here it says h1 where it executes the credit card payment and there's this form where it asks for all the things that are needed like the name the email the address the amount the currency the credit card number the expiry, all the things that you use to make a regular credit card payment. Then there's the next section which accepts a Bitcoin payment. And here you also have your name, your email. We have the Bitcoin address and the amount. And it has also decided that Stripe will be the payment gateway it will use to conduct the credit card payments. And it has asked me to provide my Stripe API key to conduct all the payments or to receive the payments. It is also using Block Cipher to conduct the Bitcoin payments. So this is kind of mind blowing that it has decided all the things, at least the default things that are needed to complete this single page application. And this is just a small example, like I said, but if you think about it, this is a fully fleshed application that can be used. So after this code is generated, you can actually use this on an existing website to accept payments. It says, do you want to execute this code? I'm going to say yes. Uh, and I also didn't provide any Stripe or Block Cipher key. So I don't expect this to work, but it is starting out the main things. For example, it is downloading Flask, it's downloading Stripe. All of these are functionalities that are needed for this application. It says successfully installed WT forms, works, you Bitcoin, Blinker, Block Cipher, Flask, and unlike AutoGPT or some of the other autonomous agents, this does not get stuck. It actually gets completed. So as you see, everything is done. I don't need to do anything else. Its task is done. I have this entire payment website ready to go. It created this folder called memory. It created this workspace, which has my app.py file right here with all the code that is needed to conduct what I need to do, that is accept payments. It has also provided me a readme where it tells me everything that it did, all the things that I need to do to run this file. It also has this shell script which runs this application after I export my Stripe and Block Cipher key. Basically, after I have my personal API keys ready to go, I can actually run this as a Python command and complete this application. And all I really needed to do here is to provide this main prompt which is a single line in natural language telling GPT engineer what I need. And this costed me just a few cents. Actually, I'm wrong. It has hardly costed me even one cent. If you look at the table right here, this table is from 0, 0.00 to 0 0.0003. So this is a fraction, a fraction of a cent 
for me to run this command. And this is just mind blowing. And I get that this is a fairly simple application, but even with that, for a software engineer to write all this code all the way here, it takes a fair amount of time and testing out things to make sure that you're doing this correctly, but the skeleton is ready to go. Even if this is not working all the way, I think it's at least 80 to 90% there. And all I need to do is to tweak it a little bit in case it doesn't work on the first go. But I'm not gonna do that in this video. All I really wanted to show you how I can use GPT Engineer to create a payment page with Stripe and Lockcipher to accept credit card payments and Bitcoin payments for me to receive them using my personal API key. And all I need to do is to provide them right here in the code. And this is now ready to go. And that's all I have for you in this video. Hope you got some value from it. And if you did enjoy it, make sure to subscribe to my AI newsletter and my channel and hit like on this video. I have a lot more videos coming up. Till the next one, thank you so much.